What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. This is the place to come for all your boxing and fight game, I don't know, knowledge, analysis, breakdowns, predictions, and of course, like always, amazing guests. I am your host, Rex Ruger, along with the esteemed Alexis Arguello Puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis, taking a sip of my drink, back with another episode. Yeah which may or may not be brought to you by the cake pen. It might make its resurgence uh, tonight, folks. I was out smoking uh, smoking some of the God's good herb a little while ago, but now I'm here. And our guest is here. And it's exciting. It's exciting tonight, folks. I can't believe how excited I am, man. I really can't. We just got to get him in here with the camera and the, uh, where is he? Do we got him? Macho time, baby. There he is. We can't see you very good. Macho time. How about now? Oh, yeah. There's the lighting. It's great. There, I, oh, there he is. Man, it's such an honor to have you on here, Hector Camacho Jr., man. It's a blessing to you man. It seems surreal to me. It seems surreal to me. I, I, every single time I come face to face with a legend, dude, I, I don't know. I kind of get a little, uh. You know, fanboy, man. I mean, you and your father are just hey, you such know what? legends. I'm thankful God like you because God, because God like you, we are who we are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's the honor, too. If it wasn't for the press, we wouldn't be who we are. Right. I don't right. think you got gave enough credit for that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, man. And and, and one Just thing don't I want to no shit about me. You know, we good. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, one of the first things I want to address, though, man, is the fact that I am very happy to read that as of last year, uh, uh, there has been some closure uh, in, in the tragic circumstances surrounding your father. Some justice has has happened. I I really haven't been on the case. I left the case years ago. I left it alone. Uh, the simple fact that for me, there's no returning back. You know, um, yeah, he's gone. And it, for me, there's no justice in that. That that that, that belongs to God and whoever done it. Um, I know that recently they arrested some, you know, they arrested like four or five guys. Uh, but I haven't heard too much about that. One of them got locked up and they released them, released them again and locked them up again. So I'm hoping they close for my grandma's sake, for the family's sake. But my job is to keep them alive. Yeah. And it's still yeah. macho time. Now, we recently had James Hagler on here, uh, um, Marvelous Marvin Hagler's son. And, and I want to get your take on this. What was it like growing up in a household? Where you know where your father was a professional fighter, like what would be some misconceptions? We uh, was he a strict parent? What was it like growing up with him? Okay, well, people get missed school. This that you know people think I grew up with the macho man. I grew up with my mother. I was I was in a household full of females. My yeah. grandmother, who I love very much, you know, God rest in peace. A powerful, strong woman. <laughs> she raised five of us. I don't know how she did. Little small. Puerto Rican lady from you know from Puerto Rico. Um, my mother, of course, and my two aunts. Um, it, it was great because people knew how I was like famous from young. I walked around the street, people just you know, pointed me. That's the much children. I didn't know what I was going on. I was a young boy. Can That's I take right. a picture? Yeah, take a picture. It was cool. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. But there's a flip side to it. The flip side is I I also get bullied. I'll get tested. You know, you can watch a junior that's fight. I had yeah. a lot of that coming up, especially Spanish yeah, all I grew up at. When I started getting old at the age of 10, 11, 12, I started having a little resentment. And my father was fighting on TV, but I was still in the hood. And people yeah. like, that's not Camacho Jr., that's not Camacho's son. If that's Camacho's son, why he doing, you know, why he's in the hood? Why, why he dressed like that? I had, yeah. I had those kind of issues, you know? It yeah. was cool. It was a blessing at one point. Then, you know, it had his guns, you know? But the great thing is I was always going to my father's training camp, to his fights. He always looked for me. He always come around. I knew when he was around because he would stop by the house. You know, the cars were out there, a big crowd. He was, you know, he was the, the macho man's black boy. He was love. Very. So it was very. cool. It had ups and downs. Like being, he was my superhero. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, with, him being a, with him being a fighter and then obviously, uh, you know, Afterward, you became a fighter. Did you feel, uh, or did you put any kind of pressure on yourself? You, uh, you, you know, because you were in his shadow. You, you, you know, did you feel like, you know, you, you had to like, you know, uh, supersede him in any way? Did, did, did it ever feel competitive? 
you know, when it came to boxing and my career, yeah, I want to become known. I want to become, because from small, I was always pointed at, that's Camacho Jr., that's Camacho's son, that's Camacho's son. I wanted to know if I had who I was. Right. So my goal was to get into boxing. But that wasn't my, um. I want to be a baseball player. It's not to my there father. There we go. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm Puerto Rican. I want to be a baseball <laughs> player. I didn't want to box my father's family. I didn't have to do that, you know? Yeah. I never thought about going to my father's shoe, becoming, you know, a boxer. But that didn't happen to Amuto Orlando, Florida in 1992. That's my father fought Chavez. He has helped us move out of Spanish Harlem. And we moved to Florida, Orlando. And that's why I started boxing. It was my mother who put me into boxing. Hey, come on, son. You can't be in oh, you know, okay. for school, hang out home. And it was my mother who pushed me through that. But there was no pressure. I looked at it like a light. Like she was the macho man. I released that pressure off of me. Come on. People like Macho Camacho come every, every hundred years. You don't see those kind of fighters. Those Very are special rare. fighters. Special. My man, I love them, man. I got some macho time cannabis here. I got some matcha side cannabis, by the way. So do we. Get medicated. Yeah. Get medicated. Yeah. Um, yes, and I looked at it as a light, you know, more than more than a shadow. It helped a lot. I would got pointed at, but I had to perform, you know, I had to go up there and step up as well. So yeah, yeah. Well, it's especially probably has to be tough because you're also his namesake. You know, you're carrying the same exact name as him as well. So I mean. That's got to be tough, but, 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 so you yourself right now, you've been doing some exhibitions. Is that going to continue or are you done fighting? I still, I look beat up. I'm still good. Hand speed. Nah, you corner. still look good. Chip. You still look good. That's yeah. how we feel. But when you in there, the training, the pounding, that's a whole nother story now. Yeah. The, the voodoo part of the training. I don't know. Can I get to that right now? I'm up here. Of course, I got my age, but it takes a toll on your body. Yeah. I'm not a young boy. Anyway. It just me. I took out my reflexes. You know, when I'm not doing nothing, I'm, you know, I go to basketball court, I go to hoop, and I shoot. If I hit it, I mean, I'm still on point. I'm accurate. Same yeah. thing in baseball. I go to batting cage for my vision. You know, I know I'm still on point, so I feel yeah. like I still have in the tank. Do you want to play Benji's one-on-one -on -one in basketball over there? He's pretty good. <laughs> I, 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 I got a good J. I, I, I don't go win no more because I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> the elbows are getting hurt, but I developed a good jumper. Yeah, so, you I never think, had much uh, so you say you, you're a big baseball fan. Who, who's your favorite baseball team? So you're from New York. I'm a Yankee, baby, New York. Yeah, I'm a long-suffering Mets fan myself. We haven't had as much to be happy about over the years as the Yankee hey, fans. we haven't, man. Hey, we haven't. We haven't. But, hey, so, still Yankee baseball. So now this uh, uh, this new venture of yours, I don't know if it's a new venture, but uh, uh, I've been in touch uh, uh, with a guy that you're training now. So you're you, so you so are you more interested in that aspect of boxing now? Do you like this role as a trainer? You know, I like the promotion the, the promotion side of it. I, I love the showcase, but you know, boxing is something that I had last in the tank. I got several parts I'm working in. Like I said, I'm taking my time to Hollywood. I signed up a couple movie acts, you know, for gigs. So I'm keeping myself busy. I got a, I got a, a horror movie coming out. I'm in that I don't have to. I'm in that's gonna be, you know, from December. I'm doing something my life story, so I'm staying busy outside of it. That's a tough part in boxing because once we retire, you know, it's, it's almost that's it for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. most of us, like 90, 94% of five, we retire, retire broke. We come from nothing, you know what I'm right. saying? I'm right. always hustling to keep myself going, you know, that never leaves. I understand that boxing is that's it, you know, but right. I always keep myself busy. But yeah, um, I got a quote from, from his manager, Victor Fonseca, who's a good friend of mine. Said Victor, if Victor called me up with Macho, I got a fighter here. I'd like for you to check out. I'm the feeder for no. So I, let me give it a shot, you know. I don't think I have the patience to work with fighters, but my boxing IQ is tremendous. I've been I've been I was born in boxing. Right. So I've been able to dissect and pick things out. So I mean, right. I, if a good opportunity comes around, yeah, I would love to get back to boxing. That's what I'll do. That's what I plan to do. Get back. We have a gym coming up now in Indiana in Indiana. In Greensburg, it's called Intensity Fighting Gym. Thanks to my, you know, thanks to my partner Kevin Oliver. So I, I plan to keep my hands on boxing, yeah, but to educate yeah. the youth, to guide them. And, and now, you know, obviously, you said that you were you, you were born and raised uh, uh, around boxing, and, and then you went into talking about boxing IQ. You know, I, I you know, I, I look at your father as a guy with uh, with obviously a lot of flash and pizzazz. But a, a, but a very high IQ in that ring, though. Certainly knew what he was doing. You know, do you feel like that's that, that that's something that you just kind of absorbed being around him? The knowledge, yes. And, you know, from small, you know, from small, I was been around boxing people. I was asked a lot of questions. And when I, when I came pro, big thanks to thanks to Dan Goosen, 
Rest in peace. He was my promoter, America Presents. He used to call me and explain to you, look, Macho, this is the budget. And that's how we break it down. Yeah. He took the time out to explain to me. I'll ask questions. I've always been a student of the boxing game. So yeah. yeah, my boxing IQ when it comes to business and boxing and boxing itself is sharp. As, as, as a southpaw, as my father was, he was a thinker. He was a boxer. Very much Yeah, so. I have small IQs, but move around and, you know, yeah. it takes this. So I've developed that throughout the years. And when it comes to boxing, I'm pimple. Even in sports, man. I, I mean, I'm good at pinpointing certain things. So in boxing, I'm, I'm like that. I see a talent, I could you know, pinpoint the end. Yeah, you know, so well, I feel like that. It might I, be I, feel job like, I feel like because of all that flash and, 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 and the flamboyant nature of your father, that sometimes that ring IQ actually gets overshadowed. I don't think people really realize, uh, it, 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 you know, I, I, what a technician he really was in there. Ooh, he had to back it up. He's great for a reason. Yeah. That, the, 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 the costume, everything. Hey, you see fighters today wearing Macho Camacho boxing trunks in that style. Yeah. The skirts and Macho yeah. Man broke it up, so he, yeah. he he changed the game. But yeah, as far as did. art, if you look at him as a box as a whole, oh, he was he's excellent speed, movement, excellent, developed his own style, excellent fighter. His days one of the best. Top, yeah. he yeah. held boxing. He was the Macho Man. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And 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 so, do you feel like uh, do you feel like you know? Because it always seemed like always leading up to the fights that. You know, he would talk the trash, but he always still seemed to be smiling through all of it and very laid back and relaxed. And do you, is there one guy that ever really got under his skin, you know, that he really had a disdain for? I mean, he's got every name in the book on, on his resume. He had a Pazienza. He had a Haugen. He had a couple of guys, man. But, um... Yeah, we love Greg Hardy, don't we, man? He's the macho man. He's the gentleman, you know? <laughs> and, and, you know, it's crazy. I see pass. I see pass. I've been over the past few years, but... It's always love, and you know it's always love. Besides all the 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 the, the glam, and he was a real person. Yeah, you know, yeah. And but a notorious trash talker as well, though. He, he was good at it. He knew how to sell fights. He was yeah. really the, the, he was really he was self promoted. He didn't really need no. He was self promoted. He sell. Imagine how much a much how much we worth in these days. Pay for yeah. the outfit, the entrance. How much? You right. Know, he, he was you know so. Yeah. Yeah, he was a pioneer, definitely. Benji's, you hear that? A pioneer. A pioneer. Yeah, I mean, they they still doing that stuff today. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. He left his finger. He left his fingerprints in that. You know, he was the first man. That, you know, what I'm saying not the first, but yeah, the fight out there, like you know, Danny Ray Lopez, and you know, came out the table. He will kill that. He was like really like that that, that star, that pizzazz. That, yeah. What do you think yeah, was it? Still see it to today. And now, when you look back at his career, like, what do you think for him with all his accomplishments and all the names that are on his resume, you know, in your father's career, what do you think was the pinnacle? Is there one fight that you would point at and say, that's the night that he was brilliant? I mean, he had a lot of performances like that. But is he had there a lot of great performances, that, a, a lot of fights that I, I could point to for that was that night of this, that was that night of that. Like, for yeah. example, um, people always mention the Xavier fight. When he got hit with Zavio, his style changed on the boxer. Okay, great. Yeah. He became a master boxer. Then, you know, people thought he was finished, came back and beat Pazan. That was a huge fight. Then he came back to beat Mancini, who was a tremendous man. I mean, how you put it, it was a huge fight. So then Macho Man went ahead and fought the great Hulu Chavez Chavez and Chavez beat the butt, you know? So his career was declining, he fought Trinidad. So his career basically lost again, his career basically over. But he still was who he was, that been knocked out, still the Macho Man, a great record. Came back years after and fought Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Sugar Ray out of retirement, first man knocked him out. That was more like a gimme, he shook him out of retirement, came back and knocked him out. So his career kept on going afterwards. Like he took advantage of his career. And the fight, Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. A prime Oscar De La Hoya was on his butt for 12 rounds, couldn't stop him. Oscar was a bad he... boy. And I'm pretty sure that was the fight that actually sent Sugar Ray into retirement for good. That was the last yeah, one. Yeah, he came him. out and went back in. Yeah, he <laughs> came out and, came, came out and yeah. sent him right back in again. So I had to mess with my fuck. I love Sugar Ray. I said, Pop, that fight don't count. Yeah, yeah. Sure. He, he, he doesn't like that, but I don't tell him. I love Sugar, you know, but. And now, yeah, when it comes, you know? now when it comes to the current boxing scene, are there any guys right now that you're watching and that you're like a, a fan of that you're enjoying? I'm not really a boxing fan no more like I used to be. I'm boxing IQ still good. Of course, I can look at fights now, pick both two fighters and, and 
And I, I give my kudos to the young fighters, man. They fighting each other. They stepping up. We didn't have that for a while. These young fighters, these proper young fighters, they stepping up. They fighting each other. They win to put on the line, you know? Yeah. So I, I give kudos to young boys. They keep it boxing alive. Boxing by dead. Got the young boys. You got the Shakur team. You got the tank. You got, you know what I'm saying? You got the Rafim. You got the, the Ryan Garcia. They didn't win to fight each other now. They, you know, it's, it's interesting. So yeah. any moment, we got good fighters to worry about somebody, you know, somebody undefeated, but kind of go. They, they risking it, and that's what we need for boxing. So I can yeah. lie to a couple young fighters, of course, of course. Boxing so interesting you, right what now. Do you, uh, what do you think about the? We, I mean, it's kind of always been prevalent, but I feel like it's been really prevalent as of late with the poor judging and bad scores. Is that something that like stands out to you in boxing? Is something you always noticed? I always noticed that shit from being in business of boxing from young. Now, now it's more like you know, in front of you, in your face. It makes you question it, you know, at times, yeah. you know, the sport of boxing. You know, yeah. What the hell's going on? You see, you see the NFL, you see the baseball, the top of boxing ring too. But yeah. you see things that doesn't make no sense. And, you know, it's it just, it just part of the business. It's just entertainment at the end of the day. Entertainment at the end of the day, that's what it really is. Right. Boxing is more of a business than a sport. It has always been for promoters, but now, you know, more business now for us fighters now. And now we can eat thanks to your favorite fighter, Floyd Mayweather, you know, who changed the game. It really yeah. started watching De La Hoya, but, you know, Floyd's on the level, but that's where we are, you know. Is Floyd the GOAT in your mind? You know what? I learned to respect Floyd throughout the years. Now that he's not, now that he's out, you know, he's completely out of boxing for me. You know, I look back watching his fights. He was great. Yeah. He was great. You can't, yeah. you can't argue that he was great. Yeah. He could maybe claim that he fought the Still most world sure. champion. He could maybe say that he, he, that's all facts. But at the day, is what people stand on. Ali was great. Not because in the real way he stands on. Macho Camacho, you still see his handprints in boxing. I yeah. mean, that's just, that's just a layer. Macho Camacho, you know, there's a lot of great fighters in there, bro. It's great. Yeah. But if Floyd, yeah, he's, yes, yes, I cannot deny it. I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> I cannot deny it. A kid. You know, for yeah, performances, flawless. Yeah, yeah. Ahead, big man, what, what were you gonna say? I don't even know. I was listening to <laughs> that's the weed right there getting to you. Flawless <laughs> performance. You gotta give it to flawless. Oh, you oh, back no, at you, you're like, wow. I was gonna say you could you could question the Oscar fight. Not yeah, mind. yeah. Where do you stand on the Oscar fight? Even Floyd's father said that he thought that Oscar won that fight, though. That was a close one. It was a close one. Yeah. Nice fight. I mean, it depends on, you know, if you look at a little, you know, a little, uh, well, Oscar's the whole, I thought you were going to be hooked. Yeah. I'm not doing shit, but you want to count that, and uh, actually got to count that. But when it comes to sharpness and countering and, and itself, Floyd really, really beat Oscar when it came down to it, you know what I'm saying? And the changes, and you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, yeah. look better, just, you know, just all, all Oscar around. Kind of, Oscar, kind, Oscar, kind of a, Oscar kind of aborted his game plan, too, uh, after a while. He stopped using his jab. He kind of stopped fighting after a while, too. He let off the gas. I mean, Floyd's okay. confident, man. We got to say, Pretty Boy was a, he was a nasty, he was a nasty motherfucker when he was young. There, yeah, he was. That's when you wiped out Angel Manfrey, when you thought Manfrey was a killer. We thought Manfrey was somebody. Yeah. And he beat Daddy, and Floyd took him, you know, and he made fights look easy, man. It's just hard yeah. to go yeah. against that's him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Nobody ever really gave him a hard time. Now, now speaking of hard times, is there one fighter on your resume that you remember or, or, would, or would name as your toughest opponent? You know, when it comes down to my career, man, maybe cliche and shit, but I, I was blessed with talent. Right. Like, I think I had, I just smoked weed. I just get fun. I just get fun. But when it came to, like, I, I, I was my biggest, you know what I'm saying, biggest, um, hardest opponent. Like, you know, yeah. I had yeah. the blessed talent. I had the skills. I didn't have to train. I'm going there, do I do it? You know, so I, I can say myself, but, you know, it, when I fought Leha, the Leha was tough. He was tricky. Um, it's really tough to say when it comes down to those kind of you know questions. When it comes to my case, at least, is there one guy that is there one guy that you remember uh, most being hit by, and, and somebody that really rang your bell? Shit, the one rang my bell was David Lemieux. He must have hit me so hard, I didn't even know what the fuck happened. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was a flash knockout, and I picked up five two three two three throwers. I thought he was just completely nothing. But when I got hit by that fucking middleweight, I remember I got back up. But I don't know what the fuck was going on. And the fight was finished. I remember me asking my corner, you know what happened? The fight's over. It's over? What do you mean it's over? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't feel the shot. I left clean. I left clean. 
Yeah, and he was a tough hombre, though, man. Basic punch, I guess. I mean, nothing special. Yeah, yeah. Well, he t uh, I mean, he was a title holder at one, t at one point, though. Yes, wasn't he, he was. He got yeah. credit for that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, so when you look back at your father's legacy, uh, uh, you know, is there one thing that you want people specifically to remember about him? Obviously, we know about the fighting skill. We know about the pizzazz. We know about the showmanship and all that stuff. But what would be something that you would know as his son that people might not know that would be something that, uh, you know, that, that that would resonate with people? He didn't play when it came to his to, to boxing. Like, you know, he party hard. But yeah. He trained hard. And when he was young, I, I didn't, you know, that was, it, it was less partying. But um, he didn't play when it came to training. He was dedicated, not play. Um, when he come back to his career, that you know, also the bonus he had, he took on the toughest opponents. You know, instead of surviving twelve hours of Chavez and that brutal body attack, you, you know, you take you taking a taking yeah. a young Oscar Little Hoy with a phenom that yeah. pushes twelve rounds. Just why he meant to boxing, it was excitement to see Macho come out. Come out. You want yeah. why he dressed like? What are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, he, he certainly created he certainly created a uh, buzz. Are there any guys talk about the eighties? That's before and then that before, you know what I'm saying? So about the eighties, like when he fought at the time when Tyson fought, we just feel an excitement. No matter what state you are, you yeah. felt that shit was fighting. Yeah. And Floyd yeah. had that in here and then, you know what I'm saying? Oscar had it, the macho man had it. So we have those kind of things, you won the greats. Is there any guys right now? who have that X factor that you think of in boxing where they've got the full package, you know, the showmanship, the skill to back it up. Are there any of those standout characters that, that you know, that we, that we learned to love so much a, a la a Hector Camacho or, a, or, you know, some of these you know, Prince Nassim, these flashy guys that can back it up. I mean, we got a couple of fighters there, you know, characters there, you know, we have, you know, the Ryan Garcia, pretty boy that's always been in boxing. We have the female who's exciting, you know, we have the Tank Davis. And so we have those kind of fighters, you know. Um, they're doing massive numbers for being young fighters, young boys, you know what I'm saying? So you still have, though, but it's not that with that glamour, that glitz there was back in the 89 of boxing was boxing, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's a whole different feeling. I don't know if I'm old, you know. I mean, in my 40s, they're a little different, but we don't have that. Back then, it was excitement, like, you know, excitement. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just had that recently with the Spence and, and, and Crawford fight, but. That fight they didn't fight, fight each other, the box is there. You see when Garcia fought Tank, it was excitement. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Both, that's what we need in boxing. Yeah. So the only way it will happen if fighters fight each other, then we have excitement. I wasn't so excited about paying eighty four ninety nine though, to see Ryan Garcia take a knee on a body shot, but. I know, I know, just, just the possibility of let's see what happens. Right. Is there going to be body some... shots are rough, man? They motherfucking the body shots. But they're like, nah, boxing is. Now, I heard it, you know, he was, we heard that he was hurting camp. You know, that, that shit just happened, man. I don't know how, you know, that's boxing nowadays. You know, if it's, you know, entertainment or if it's, that's really what it is. <laughs> and now, so what could you tell us about this guy that you're training right now? I sent him out an invite. I'm trying to pull him into the call. He hasn't responded yet. But so, well, why don't you tell us about him then? He's 4 0. Like, we never know where the next match is coming from. Usually, we know as an amateur, they could, they'll be great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this is another yeah. 4 0 guy. You know, like I tell everybody has a chance. You start from nothing. Everybody has a chance right now. Yeah. You know, learn. Learn the boxing game. Learn the boxing game. This is my first weekend with him. He's a Mexican. So, while well, I'm trying to get off his ass, just being a typical Mexican, taking punches, longevity. Stay yeah. a little slick. There's little things you could do. But yeah. that's a little longevity, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to bring a little stick to some, a little coloring to some, a little more boxing to some, and bring it on boxing IQ to some from young, you know? And so, what I mean, weight does he, he fight has in? talent, good, good no, hook, and there's a lot of work, you know? That's he fights what? what? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just going to ask, what weight does he fight at? He's fighting 47 right now. Okay, okay. And so what's the plan? Is the plan to... Uh, 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 is the plan to, to be very active? A lot of these guys that are that are starting up, they, they've been very active, fighting multiple times a year. I, I, like I told them, the main thing is to learn. Learn your craft. Get the craft yeah. together. My job is to train them. That's the management and promotion part, what they're going to do with them. Um, my job is to get them sharp. It's, you know, put my, some experience in my, some of my macho style in home, you know? Is this something you can see, see yourself is this something you could see yourself doing and branching out and 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 having like a like a stable of fighters and 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 wanting to train? 
You never know. You know, I have a lot of projects in my hand. There's boxes of something I love from small. I've been involved. But I know it's a dirty fucking business. I, I, I know boxing. It takes away energy, man. It's a lot of energy containment, you know. So it's tough, man. Um, who knows? You know, I'm right now going full hearted. Pass on the knowledge I have to the young, to the youth. Explain the sport of boxing. See, again, boxing got to make sense. That's yeah. the thing about it. Yeah. Being a fighter is one thing. Being a boxer is something else. To be a boxer, yeah. that's a whole totally mind. That's a whole different thing. No doubt. And just know the ranges. You know, the in range, the middle range, the out range. Just break it down how it is, you know. Now, what do you so, think well, about these? No, I was what do you say, think about was, these? Oh, go ahead. Was, go ahead. I was going to say the, the fighter that you're working with, like his body frame, do you see him like moving up or staying at 147? Or you, or you think he's got a big enough frame to, to keep moving up? Yeah, he walk around right now like one sixty, like one sixty something. So he kind of, you know, he kind of stocky. Yeah. So you know, yes, we can change. Yes, if I can pass something down to him, you know, watch your weight. I always had that issue with my weight, you know. So that's that's something that you know. But you gotta stay active, you know. You gotta stay active, and it's tough to stay active now and then. The most is people got a stable fighter. They got to, they got to a contract. They got obligated, you know, to fulfill. So this time is tough. But uh, what do you stay active, man? You know, go to Mexico, go here, go there, get wins, keep stuff going. You know, your time will come. Now, where do you stand on these? Uh, uh, you know, obviously, like this is kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, seeped into boxing a little bit, where we're seeing these Jake Paul type <laughs> fucking gimmick fights. Where do you stand on these? I don't pretty much mind that shit. But what they gotta tell us fighters is that learn how to market yourself. Do they have a market? You can't mad at them. They're putting butts in seats. Fuck, I'm getting mad for. They're making middle people watch. You know, I can't get mad at them. Yeah. They business. They're making their money. Hustle. It is a good hustle. <laughs> it's a hustle. It hustle. If you go pay the watch, then that's on them. They have their own market, you know. So hey, I, I I don't knock that. And when it comes to Jake Paul, at least with him, he sees he's getting better. He's yeah. getting better. So at least he's trying. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't that bad. I don't watch his shit. I, I, I know, but I gotta say he's though. better and you know, doing the job. I gotta say that Logan Paul event yesterday, though that arena was packed. People are turning out for this stuff, though. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah, it really you know, was. You know, really this word that Showtime is going out of business. No, I know. I mean, boxing might, you know, boxing is in a up up situation. Like it's tough to see, you know, what's next for us. You know, and it's tough. I still miss HBO. <laughs> I loved HBO boxing. <laughs> Talked about it. They give you a backstory. How we yeah. train you can't remember back in the day. Right. Lavin yeah. Lurch and the voice. I mean, was, you know, everything. Music to it. It was just boxing. Yeah. So so what else on here can you promote before we let you go, man? Like what's going on in the world of Hector Camacho Jr., man? What do you want people to know? Where can people find you? Yeah, I try to stay busy. I keep my I keep myself moving, you know, I keep the mind moving. We're going through a lot of life right now, you know, so a lot of crazy shit going on in life, you know. You got to be in tune, be in tune with yourself, man. You know, um, and always believe in yourself. You know, always believe, push forward. I, I always, I always move with God first. You know, I put God for anything. I try to keep my ten toes to the ground, be humble. You know, yeah. I understand tomorrow they could go and you back to nobody. You know what I'm saying? You might be, I might be at twenty today, but some people I might be no, I ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? So I understand yeah. how life is. You know what I'm saying? So I keep my ten toes to the ground. Just keep, keep pushing forward. You know, to try to leave a legacy for my kids. You know, like my father left me open doors, and that's in the word of God. Like leave, make sure you leave your kids good. You know, so yeah, that's why I'm at being a good human being and pushing. I work on my nonprofit and Major Foundation. I'm looking to open up gyms and saying, like I said, I have my boxing gym coming up now with my partner Kevin Oliver, intensity fighting, which I'm making MMA, boxing, bare knuckle. So, you know, I'm rubbing show the bare knuckle thing. Be my hands into that along with everything else I'm doing, going back and you know, doing my movie gigs. I'm working on my father's film as well. I'm working on different things. I'm staying busy, you know. Keep myself so, busy, brother. So, no, are, are no, you, no, no, no. Before you say this, because I got to right. ask, because I, I don't want to forget. You you plugged the weed before, showed the, the, the macho, Camacho weed. Um, I'm curious, like, that's your strain? And, like, yes, my strain. We are in California. What's that? What's that process like? Like picking the strain and kind of, kind of like figuring out like what you're, like how you're doing it. Are you? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like what was your involved in it? It's a team of us. It's really my partners, Vin, Vinny, Vinny V, and Bobby Sanchez. They out there in California. 
So they're out there, they'll pick it out. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the team. I like to be a functional pothead. You know, in the nighttime, I take my energy to go to sleep. I like to be yeah. a functional pothead. I like my energy. You know what I'm saying? I, I yeah. like to be creative. I like to read. I like to write. I don't yeah. wake up in the morning and smoke no shit and go to sleep. I like my shit to be up or jogging, shadow boxing. That's what yeah. I, I'm about, you know? So that's what I look for always. The team is, but you know, yeah, we've been in the business three years. Um, We've just been like, like, bunch of 30 cents stores. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad the world of sports is starting to see the benefits of marijuana, though. It's good. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be so good for inflammation and for and for recovery and relaxation. And Shout out to the Nevada Boxing Commission, Las Vegas. And now, if, if, if you come up, you know what I'm saying, dirty on uh, 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 the drug test, you know, they, they passed that. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So and I appreciate that, man. I've been fine for years off of those motherfuckers. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you mentioned bare knuckle in the cage. Uh, is that any aspect of combat sports that you're interested in? Are you interested in training guys or, or even getting in the cage yourself? I'm not into that. I have no interest in that. But that's just an uh, uh, exit to get the kids off the streets. Yeah. And they want to be a boxer. They want to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So just an option. And right yeah, now, the growing the sport when it comes to bare knuckle, thanks to BYB. Yeah, I do it's possible by BYB. So special thanks to them. Um, we got the Trigon. We got the only Trigon in the United States in the world, basically, for a gym. So yeah, get the guys coming in off the street, basically. That's what we're doing it. My partner lost his son to gun violence. I lost my father to great Camacho Camacho gun violence. So I'm an advocate when it comes to guns, get kids off the street. You know what I'm saying? Boxers save lives. Boxers save my life. Yeah. Save my father's life. So I promote that heavy, you know. So that's what we're doing in gym. So yeah, are you able just to another option? Are you able to tell us anything about this Hector Camacho movie that you're talking about? This is something separate from the documentary that we saw, correct? Yeah, that documentary was great. Big thanks to Eric Draft, who really put, did a great job in 90, in, in, in 90 minutes putting it together. But it's something that's been long coming. You know, we still got a lot of steps, you know, a long way to go. We're working now. Getting the family involved, doing the right thing, the right steps is something that's needed. The true story of who is Hector Camacho, Camacho is a great underdog story, you know, people. Yeah motivational a great message so yeah we're working on it hopefully high you know, keep moving forward doors get open and be ready to roll yeah. yeah well i gotta tell you man uh you, your, your boxer didn't drop by man but i'm glad you gave us the heads up on him dude so so uh, uh so his name one more time is is what jose gomez you're gonna capitan jose gomez you, you, you're gonna hear about him we'll make sure i give him the right positions you know okay. use my contacts give him the right fights you know well, I'm also I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm, right also I'm also in contact. I'm in contact with him and Victor as well. So hopefully, I'll be able to get him on at an, an, at another time, man. But listen, man, it's been an honor talking to you, man. And I yeah, watch you off the couch boxing, man. I appreciate you guys. You know what yeah. happens? Yeah, I, I, you know. I hope we can keep in touch and we can do this again from time to time. Oh, definitely, man. And yeah. I let him. Uh, hey, we we'll talk after this, man. That much, that much of time stream and get gotta get it. Much time cannabis. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 I, was gonna, I was gonna say you gotta you gotta let, let them know where to get that at. I'm gonna get some of that. Yeah, yeah send I'll us a link. information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pass that on to us, definitely, man. And it's been a pleasure, man. Really, thank you for doing you're this. Smoking paper, you know what I'm saying? When you get half to the joint, you want to stand the eight count. <laughs> I look for that. I look for that fire, man. I do. I know. God uh, bless you, people. Yeah, God bless I appreciate y'all. it, Mr. Mr. Camacho Jr. Thank you so much, yeah, man. Much, much, love you. much love to you, man. And there he goes, man. A fucking living legend right there, man. Another guy from the loins of a legend, man. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing that we just talked to Hector Camacho Jr. A guy himself with a 58 win, 7 loss, 1-1, one one, 33 KOs. His own illustrious career. 33 big wins coming by knockout. Big wins coming by way of knockout. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I wanted to let you know, so I guess I'll clue the audience in, man, that I see everybody – out there pimping and, and and hustling and grinding and getting their promos up. So I won't play it right now, but I was out in the garage and I did record a promo that I will be putting up on Facebook. And I think I have tagged our new, uh, I think I have tagged or possibly coined our new, uh, our new uh, exit strategy for each episode. I, 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 I just did it spontaneously. Full disclosure to the audience, I did it spontaneously. At the end of the fucking thing, I told people where to find us, how to watch us, to like and subscribe, 
to follow us on Facebook. And then for some reason, I just said, if you want to be a champion, then you got to roll with the champs. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful right? Yeah. If you want to be a champion, roll with the champs. Plus, for the people that know us from the weed smoking, it's kind of a double meaning, you know? Right. Roll with the champs. And uh, I we, guess I just. It, hey, and on the show, we have rolled with some champs. Yes, we have. I, I thought maybe Camacho would maybe dip into his uh I thought maybe Camacho Jr. would dip into his stash there, man, and maybe partake, you know, during the episode. But yeah, we have. We smoked with Montel Griffin, Montel Ice Griffin. Yeah. Had a little smoke session with him and chopped it up. I mean, I'm sure I, you know, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of boxers that are that, that could possibly be on here indulging. That's for sure. And I want people to know out there that I did do this, man, on a very limited voice. I'm pounding the orange juice, man. Uh, the vocal cords are starting to go south on me, man. Yeah. But, but for Camacho Jr., man, you make it happen. There's no crying in podcasting. So so you got your new tagline. We're doing this right here in front of the fans. You got your new tagline. You go with the new tagline. But we got to keep the Gary Busey in there. Just for the All right, love so of just remind us then, like, just say, uh, just for the uh, love uh, of the views. Well, yeah. So I would just, I would just say, you know, at this point, I'd like to hearken back to what our great American poet Gary Busey uh, uh, once said when asked about uh, uh, his level of toughness. Yeah, that's what him and Howard Stern were actually talking about when he was quoted as uh, saying that. You know, because Howard said something to him to the effect of like. Uh, you know, you, you're a big physical, you know, guy that gets in your face and stuff. Like, you, you strike me as a guy that can hold his own. It's probably tough. And then Gary Busey replied with, I set you right up. Yeah. Gary Busey replied with the great line of, I can go 15 seconds with anything. Yes. And on that note, I will remind people to, uh, you know, if they're watching this right now, certainly like and subscribe to the channel. Lots of great content up there. As a matter of fact, I will let you know, man that I've gotten so confident with the amount of talent we're going to get in here that I posted four episodes today. Yep. Four brand new episodes are up there. At the time of this recording today, Sunday, October 15th, you can now go and see interviews with Bones Adams, former WBA super bantamweight champion and uh, trainer, uh, the great James Hagler, the uh, boxing promoter and son of the marvelous one. Uh, there is also an interview up there with, who am I forgetting? Uh, you put up uh, the, the silencer. Aaron, the silencer, M -M McKenna. Yeah, he's a great young man doing great things in the middleweight division. Right out of Ireland. Go fighting Irish. And then I also put up, uh, again, we chopped it up with uh, old friend of the show, Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. And please, I implore people to go out and watch because in that episode, his son, Demarcus Corley, Little Chop, uh, also did his first ever uh, uh, interview because he's about to make his amateur debut, 11 years old. I mean, come on, he's the son of Chop Chop Corley, already a southpaw, already going to probably be slick as hell. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's four great ones up there. Slick. Already slick. Already yeah. slick. Uh, uh, you got to bear with the episode and bear with our, our, old, guy, our old guy banter because, uh, you know, uh, we did talk boxing a little bit in the beginning of the episode as, as Chop worked, Chop Senior worked his magic in the kitchen. But you do get to see almost like a mock, uh, uh, you know, showing of what a Chop Chop Corley cooking show would look like, right. which is nice. Chop Chop's yeah. got that kind of, uh, he's got he that was kind rapping, of, He was wrapping jalapeno poppers with ferocity. Yeah, he was wrapping jalapeno poppers. He had some good, I don't remember what it was, but he had some chops or some beautiful cutlets or something in the oven. I don't know. He was doing his thing. Yes, he was. Doing his, he was doing his thing, man. He really was, man. So, yes, I will end this episode first. We got to thank the legend himself, man, the great Hector Camacho Jr., another guy that I like to say is from the loins of legend, but he's also a legend himself, man. Make no mistake. His father was great, but so is Junior, man. I mean, you know, rest in peace to the great. Hector Camacho Sr., Macho Time, one of the most exciting, explosive fighters to ever do it. I mean, I don't think you really realize the names that are on, on Pops' resume. Right. Fucking crazy, dude. Fucking crazy. Win, lose, or draw, the names are crazy. Two, two wins against Roberto Duran. 
you know, fucking exactly. wins over tough guys like Greg Hagen, uh, you know, went the distance with Julio Cesar Chavez, beat Boom Boom Mancini. I mean, come on, man. I'm, I, I'm not even, I'm not even scratching the surface, man. But so thanks to him. Uh, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and all that good shit, yada, yada, yada. And I will end this with reminding people that if you are tuning in and you want to continue to be a champion, then you need to roll with the champion.